Well guys, spring is officially here, and with that, all the glorious heat that helps really fuel the growth of Bermuda and Zoysia and St. Augustine and all the warm season grasses that we care about and love oh so much is gonna become a thing. And with that, the topic of watering is starting to come up. So I figured that now would be a great time to have a quick chat with you guys about it. So the most common questions that I get when it comes to watering are around when and how should you water your lawn. So coming up, I'm gonna talk about each of those, and if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna share a tip that can help you reduce your watering in half. Let's get started. So to kick off our quick chat around watering, it makes sense to first define like how much water your grass really needs, right? So I'm dealing with a Bermuda grass lawn, um, and for most warm season lawns, Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine, they all require around one inch of water per week, so really not as much as you might think. If you have a cool season lawn like a rye or a tall fescue or Kentucky bluegrass, you could bump the amount of water that those grass types need up to about 1.5 inches per week. So not as much as most people would think. Now here's the thing, that one inch per week for warm season grass or the 1.5 inches per week for cool season grasses doesn't all have to come from your irrigation system. As a matter of fact, most of the water that gets put on my lawn comes from rain. Here in the Southeast United States around this time of year, we get regular showers. So there's really not a reason for me to really have to run irrigation a whole lot. Uh, for this year so far, outside of when I've applied a granular fertilizer and I've wanted to water it in, I haven't need to run irrigation um, at all for, for any reason whatsoever. I mean, we had like heavy rain yesterday, so I'm good for this week. So really the first thing I want to get you guys to understand is that when it comes to watering, even though we've defined that an inch for warm season grass and then an inch and a half for cool season grasses, is that that's a combination of your irrigation system and most importantly from rainwater. The next question you're probably wondering is, how do I figure out how much rainwater I could get? Like from my part, my, my, where I am in the United States, um, how do I know what to expect, you know, for given the time of year? So an easy way to do that is you can simply go into Google and say uh, average rainfall for my city in this month, and that will bring up a small chart and it'll tell you what the average rainfall is in your city. Again, in the Southeast United States, we tend to get quite a bit of rain, and around here, it's around four inches around this time of year. But if you're a person that likes graphs or charts and wants something that's a little more visual to look at, which you know I personally enjoy, uh, you can visual, uh, visit a website called weatherspark.com. And once you get there, you'll be able to throw in your city or your zip code, and what's gonna come up is a chart with various different types of things. But one of the charts I'm gonna show is average rainfall throughout the year. And what, you're, what you'll see is that for Georgia, in this area, you know, we start out around 4.8 inches um, in the early spring, and then towards later on into the summer and fall, it tapers off into the three inch range. So what that means then, if you think about it, is for a lawn of my type, warm season lawn, Bermuda grass lawn, what that means is, uh, I really, I only need to put about an inch, maybe two inches of water on my lawn on average per month. So I need to supplement the water I'm gonna get from rain with a little bit of irrigation. So, you know, again, that's only if that, if the, the average, the norms hold true, but it gives you an idea that really, you, you know, this idea of watering, you know, every day or, or having to water, you know, several times a week really isn't a thing, at least not in the United, not, at least not in the Southeast United States. If you're in other parts of the country, that might be different, but around here, Georgia, uh, Florida, you know, you know, Louisiana, Alabama, this part of this part of the country where we get tend to get rain fairly regularly, um, you don't have to water nearly as much as you think you do. So we've covered that. Most of our water is gonna come from rain, at least in the Southeast, and we're gonna use irrigation as a means to supplement. So the question now is like, how long should you water? Like how, how much should you run from run each zone? Now, there's a couple different ways the schools of thoughts about this. Um, you know, an easy way to figure out how much your irrigation system puts out is to take like small containers like a, a, an empty tuna can or a small shallow dish and lay it on the lawn and then run your irrigation and see how long it takes for your sprinkler system to put out an inch of water. And, and while that's important, what's more important in my mind than how much water your irrigation system puts out in a given period of time is how much water the various parts of your lawn will hold on to. And the reason why I say that is if you look at the front part of my lawn, it's heavily sloped, right? So I, even though I, it really takes more than 10 minutes for my uh, system to put out an inch of water, if I run irrigation much longer than 10 minutes, I get a ton of runoff. So essentially, I'm just wasting water. So while you wanna say that, yeah, I wanna be able to put down an inch of, of water out of my irrigation system on the lawn, that might be your goal, um, not all parts of your lawn are necessarily gonna support that. Now, conversely, if we take a look at my back lawn, I mean, this is largely flat. You see, that's that whole area there is largely flat. So I can put a lot of water on this really heavily just once per week and still get a really, really good result. So for my back lawn, I'm usually able to get away with running a cycle of you know, 20, 25 minutes, um, no issues whatsoever. What, what, what I tend to do is 
If the further away from the patio um, I get, the, the longer the cycle I run. Because even though even this is not, doesn't show up on camera that much, there's a slight grade, a slight slope from the back towards where, where I'm sitting right now. So putting the water down really heavy there is gonna allow it to slowly move and, and drain towards this part of the lawn. So I, it's, I tend to step up the amount of water that goes out um, uh, as I get further away from, from the house. So the next question you guys might be having is, what's the best time? What's the best time of day to water your lawn? Now this one is open to a lot of controversy. You're gonna get different, a lot of different views on this. I can tell you what I do, and it, that's worked well for me. I tend to run my irrigation, have my, my, my different zones set to run starting at 4 a.m. The reason why I choose 4 a.m. is because there's still plenty of time, plenty of nighttime left um, between when you know it's old night and when the sun comes up to begin uh, really evaporating the water to allow it to really soak into the lawn. And also the second reason why I pick 4 a.m. is that the wind tends to be low. So you guys could probably hear it right now. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad, but at this time of day, uh, the wind tends to be a little bit higher. So if I were to run irrigation now, you're gonna see the, the water being blown all over the place. It's not, it's, you know, a lot of it isn't gonna get into the, the lawn. So essentially you're wasting water. So you can give that a shot for yourself. Maybe 4 a.m. will work for you, um, but that's, that's what I've used with pretty good success. All right, so if you've made it this far, time for the tip I was telling you guys about that will help you cut down on your water, and perhaps in some cases buy as much as half. So there's a, so there's a moisture management technology called Hydrotain, and some of you guys may have heard of it, but it might be entirely new to a lot of you guys. And what it is, you could, the best way to think about it without really getting too technical, is that it's a, it's a water magnet of sorts. So you apply this product to your lawn, you water it in, make sure it gets down into the root zone, and what it does is it draws water from above where it happens to be sitting in the soil and below. Because if you think about it, like the roots of most of most grass types, like when I when I had this dug up a little bit last year to, to replace some sprinkler heads, the roots will go down, you know, six, eight inches or so on my on my lawn. So whenever water gets much lower than that, uh, you know, the grass can't really take advantage of it. So the idea behind hydrotain is that when you put it down, you water it in, it allows, it essentially attracts water, it attracts water vapor from both above the root zone and below the root zone, which is going to allow your grass to take advantage of the water, that's the moisture that's already in the soil. So it's a really, really, really cool product, really, really cool technology. As far as how to apply it, it's available in both a granular and liquid form. So for the liquid form, there's a couple of caveats. Um, for the liquid, when you put it down, you cannot put it down or you shouldn't put it down on dry grass. You're gonna wanna make sure the lawn is wet and then apply it and then literally right after you apply it, you're gonna wanna water it in heavily, at putting down about a half an inch of water. So that's what you're gonna need to make sure you get it down um, all away from the surface and down into the root zone. Uh, the second option for applying hydrotain is the one that I choose, um, and that is to use the granular. I like the granular because it's a little bit more forgiving. Like you could apply the granular on a day like today, and as long as you get water within three to five days after application, you're good to go. So in my case, we got a uh, heavy rain yesterday. So the day before, uh, I put down my hydrotain uh, application on the lawn. We got a lot of it rained literally all day yesterday here in Georgia. So I got free water to put it into the lawn. You can't can't beat free uh, irrigation, right? So if you're interested in either of those products, you want to give them a shot for yourself, want to try them out, um, I will have a links in the description where you can pick them up. They're both available and are shipping now from the Golf Course Lawn Store. And really the big thing I wanted to really impress on you guys is that really the lawn doesn't take nearly as much water, as much irrigation as you might think, at least if you're in the Southeast United States. Really once per week, watering heavily and deeply, assuming your lawn can, can take it, is the way to go. That way you prevent getting shallow roots and, and in general, it's just a better way to, uh, to feed your lawn. The, the only real exception I'd say to that is if you are putting down new sod or if you're doing a seeding project, in that case, you know, watering every day is gonna be a thing because that's what you really need, especially for seed, for it to establish. So hopefully you guys found this useful. Um, if you guys are interested for a deeper dive, so this wasn't enough for you, you wanna see a little bit more detail, you know, how I have my watering set up, how my irrigation system is set up, um, there's gonna be a video following this one that's gonna go and show a deeper dive, literally how I go, I'll step through every single one of my zones and show you like how long I'm running them for, a little bit of an explanation behind each of them, and you might enjoy that. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Have an amazing day.